Welcome to the Listening Time Podcast. Hey everybody, this is Connor and you're listening to episode 93 of the Listening Time Podcast. I hope you're all doing well. I'm glad that you're listening, that you're here practicing your uh, English comprehension skills. I know that it's hard to understand native speakers, but you're doing the right thing by getting some practice in with these podcast episodes. And if this podcast has become a little easy for you and you want to practice with real English, with English spoken fast, then make sure to sign up to become a Listening Time family member and you'll get two new advanced episodes every month. And in those episodes, I speak at normal speed, so you have the chance to practice with real English and reach an advanced level of listening. And if you want to ask me questions regarding English or language learning, then become a Listening Time VIP and you can ask me questions every week and I'll answer them in a weekly Q&A session. So that link is in the episode description below this episode. That's patreon.com slash listening time. And remember to follow me on Facebook as well to get a lot of free English content. The link is also in the description below. All right. In today's episode, I'm going to talk about a few more life lessons uh, that I wanted to share with you. I already talked about a few life lessons uh, a few episodes ago, and I want to share some more with you here today. Hopefully, uh, these are interesting for you. And of course, uh, I think that whether or not they're interesting for you, it's still good uh, practice for your ears, right? Good practice for your listening. So remember that you have the transcript available for this episode. That's below the episode in the description. So click on that if you need it and listen to this episode as many times as you need until you can eventually understand everything that I'm saying without using the transcript. And if you like this podcast, please give it a five-star rating and a review and share it with anyone else you know who's learning English. All right, let's get started. Are your ears ready? You know what time it is. It's listening time. Okay, let me talk about a few life lessons I've learned. Uh, So the first one I want to talk about today is to not take your health for granted. In English, when we say that you take something for granted, what we're saying is that you don't appreciate it and you assume that it is automatic or that it will always be there. Okay. So when I say don't take your health for granted, I'm saying don't assume that you'll always have good health and you don't need to worry about it. Right. In reality, a lot of us deal with health problems. So younger people have the tendency of thinking that they're not going to have these problems. They don't need to take care of their body because when you're a teenager or you're in your 20s, a lot of the time you don't have these problems. So it's hard to imagine that you ever will have these problems. However, Older people know this very well, that most of us have some issues with our body as we age. Even if we don't have any serious issues, we still uh, get a little weaker, slower. Um, Our body changes as we get older. That's just a fact, unfortunately. So people might take this for granted When they're younger, they might take their health for granted and not take good care of themselves. And then uh, once they get a little bit older, 
they see the negative consequences of that. So that's something that we should try to avoid. And even when we're young, we should try to uh, stay as healthy as possible and do what we need to do for our body. So of course that means eating well, of course that means exercising, it means being active and doing things that we know we should do, right? But it goes beyond that. I think that it's not just about eating well and exercising, it's also about uh, taking care of your joints, for example. Your joints are the parts of your body that bend like your knees and your ankles and things like that. And it's important to also make sure you're uh, maintaining your flexibility and you're keeping your body loose and not tense all the time. And I'm saying this because I myself have had some pretty serious issues with my body in recent years. And so uh, I've had problems with my back, for example, that have caused me a lot of discomfort, a lot of pain, and have um, made it hard for me to do a lot of the things I used to do. And so I've learned that I need to pay much more attention to my body right now uh, to make sure that I'm keeping it strong and in shape and flexible and uh, all of that so that I don't uh, have major problems in the future. So now uh, I'm dedicating more time during the day uh, to helping uh, my back recover and stay loose. And so I have to uh, spend time on that and it's not very fun. Uh, it's not what I would prefer to do, but that doesn't matter. I know that I want to have better health and so I need to dedicate time during the day uh, so that I can uh, work on these problems of mine. So uh, I've learned it the hard way, but I hope that for most of you, you can just start taking care of your body when you're young or if you're already older, of course, you should be taking care of your body now so that you don't have major problems later on in life. So that's my first life lesson. Another life lesson that I've learned is that we have a lot more time to be productive during the day than we think. Most of us tend to think that we don't have a lot of free time, we don't have um, time during the day to do different things. Um, when people talk about learning English, they might say that they just have no time to learn English, so they can't do it. And uh, a lot of us have that type of thinking. However, I would say that most of us can actually uh, find more time to be productive than we really think. Let me talk a little about that. So first of all, we can find more time actively during our day because a lot of times we're doing things that aren't very important, right? Uh, a great example of this is social media right? If we spend a lot of time on social media every day, this is time that we're not spending on something productive. And I'm not saying that you should never be on social media, but what I'm saying is that if we spend a lot of time on these apps, but we also complain that we don't have enough time to do other productive things, then that's simply not true because if those other productive things were important to us, then we would stop using social media so much and spend that time doing those productive things. Does that make sense? So we can actively find times during the day where we're not really doing anything important and we can dedicate that time to doing something more productive. So that's possible, of course. 
but there are also times during the day when we can multitask uh, with headphones. Uh, in English, headphones just refer to uh, the things you put in your ears to listen to something. So during the day, there are probably times when you don't necessarily need to think so much while doing certain tasks. So if you're doing the laundry or washing the dishes or things like that, your hands are occupied, but your ears and your mind are free. So what you can do is use headphones to listen to something while you're doing those other things. And you would be surprised at how much time during the week you can gain by using that time uh, to listen to something. And you might ask, well, what should I listen to? Uh, what productive things can I do uh, while just listening? Well, for example, there are audiobooks. A lot of us want to read and sometimes we complain about not having enough time to read, uh, but this is a perfect time to actually do that. Of course, you're not reading with your eyes, you're listening to the book, but it has basically the same benefits. So you can listen to audiobooks while you're doing these other things, and that will allow you to actually reach your reading goals throughout the year. And another thing you can listen to is podcasts. There are a lot of educational podcasts like this one. For example, you can listen to the Listening Time podcast while you do something else, while you exercise, for example. And you can also just do other language learning activities in general. So, for example, I like to just listen to YouTube videos or listen to random podcasts in the language that I'm learning, and I do this whenever I can multitask, whenever I don't need uh, to use my mind uh, when I'm doing some other task. And so this gives me a lot of time during the week to actually listen to things and be productive like that. So that's how we can um, kind of utilize uh, more time than we think we have. And I've uh, done a lot of this uh, this year so far in 2023. I've been able to listen to, uh, I think, four or almost four audiobooks now. Um, and it's just uh, the middle of February at the time of recording this. So uh, I don't listen to these books all the time uh, during my free time. I actually uh, listen a lot while I'm doing something else, like working out or running or sometimes uh, walking or other things like that. And uh, I've been able to already get through a few books just like this. So that's something that has helped me out a lot so far in 2023. Okay, one other life lesson that I wanna talk about is that we have to adapt sometimes. Uh, today, we live in a world that is changing very rapidly, and it's very easy to kind of fall behind. In English, when we say that you fall behind, what we're saying is that you don't stay updated, right? Everyone else moves forward, and you stay in the same spot. So you're behind everyone else. So it's easy to fall behind if you have an attitude of, I don't want to change, right? And let me clarify something. I'm not saying that you need to change uh, in every area of your life. There are some things that you definitely shouldn't change and shouldn't adapt. And there are certain things that I uh, value values of mine, truths that I hold to be true, things like that, that 
I will never change on. I won't allow those to change just because the world is changing, right? So there are some things that should not change. That's for sure. But in terms of things like innovations and inventions that uh, happen that affect our work, for example, um, a lot of these things are inevitable and we can't do anything to stop these changes. In English, when we say that something is inevitable, what we're saying is that it can't be avoided. It's going to happen no matter what. So a lot of these changes, uh, these innovations uh, or things that change that affect our jobs, these things are inevitable. They're going to keep happening. And if we don't uh, adapt, we're going to fall behind and it's going to be hard for us to actually succeed in our industry, right? So for example, if you're an electrician and uh, you've been an electrician for decades, let's say 20, 30 years, right? If you refuse to update your skills or update your knowledge of the current trends uh, in this field and you only want to work with tools and devices and methods from the year 1990, for example, then you're probably not going to succeed in 2023 right? You have to uh, adapt and use the new tools, new methods, the things that have been updated, right? So of course, there are some people that can do things in a more old school way and still succeed. In English, when we use the term old school, we're saying uh, old from the past, right? We're saying that it's not updated, it's older. So sometimes old school can be a good thing, right? Uh, it can actually sometimes um, be beneficial to do things in a certain way that retains some of the old ideas or old methods or whatever. Sometimes that's good. But sometimes uh, it's much better to just utilize the new tool. If there's a new tool, a new technology that's going to make your job much more efficient, then you simply need to learn that tool or whatever and adapt, right? So I can think of a good example of this. Uh, I went to a language learning school in 2013 where I learned Spanish. Uh, this was a school in Mexico. And I learned in person with a teacher and it was fun. It was a fun and uh, useful experience for me. Um, as the years went by after that, um, I saw that more language schools were using online learning uh, methods or learning tools and they started to become more digital in nature. However, the language school that I went to didn't want to change. And I know that the owner of that school is very old school. So he does not want to update his methods at all. And he said something uh, along the lines of, uh, why would anyone want to learn online when they could learn in person? Uh, in English, when we say along the lines of, we're saying something similar to this, something like this. So he said something along the lines of that. And this was some years ago, maybe six, seven years ago or something. And uh, nowadays, uh, in 2023, I still receive emails from this language school and now they're advertising their 
online learning classes. And so you can see how this guy was so intent on not changing. He thought that online teaching was dumb. No one would ever want that. But suddenly he realized that a lot of people preferred that method and he was forced to adapt. So even though he didn't want to, he had no other choice. If he didn't do this, then his school was going to fail, right? So that's a good example of needing to uh, update yourself uh, in the workplace, in your business, to actually meet the needs of people in our current year, right? So uh, for me personally, this has uh, manifested itself in my career. Uh, nowadays, I use a lot of online tools to uh, help me uh, teach more people and reach a wider audience. So I use a podcast, uh, YouTube, um, Facebook, Instagram, all these different things that I wouldn't normally like. I'm not the type of person that likes the newest technology or the newest app or whatever. I'm not that type of person. And I definitely don't like social media in general. Um, I don't use social media personally. However, I know that these are tools that are really helpful for someone in my field that wants to reach a lot of people. In English, we use the word field to refer to an industry. So my field is language teaching or language learning. So I know that these tools are really useful for someone in my field. And so even though I don't like them, I don't want to use them in my personal life, I know that I have to adapt uh, because otherwise I won't grow in my career. So it's necessary for me and I have to just uh, do what's uh, needed and learn these things, learn how to use them and try to uh, utilize them in the best way possible to reach more people. And I think that I'm still in that process right now. Uh, these things don't come naturally to me, but I'm learning. In English, we can say that something comes naturally to you. This means that you can do something very easily without needing to struggle or learn a lot. Uh, so these things don't come naturally to me. I have to learn how to use them and I have to make a lot of mistakes before I can finally get the hang of it. So that's what I'm currently doing to help me in my career, in my business. So we need to adapt uh, in certain areas of our lives, uh, particularly our professional lives, uh, not in everything, of course. There are some things that we should not adapt, that we should not change, but there are other things that would be helpful to change. All right, well, why don't we stop there for today? I hope these three life lessons were interesting for you, and I hope that this was good practice for your listening. Uh, remember that if you want my advanced episodes, then sign up to become a Listening Time family member, and you'll receive two new advanced episodes every month where I speak at normal speed, so you have the chance to practice with real English. And if you become a Listening Time VIP, you'll get those advanced episodes, and also you'll be able to ask me questions regarding English or language learning, and I'll answer those in a weekly Q&A session. So the link to sign up is in the description below. And remember to follow me on Facebook as well if you want more free English content. The link is also below. And remember that you have the transcript below, so use that and listen as many times as you need. 
And if you like this podcast, please give it a five-star rating and write a review and share it with anyone else you know who's learning English. All right. Thank you for listening to this episode, and I'll talk to you on the next episode of Listening Time.